Hello, everybody. I hope that you guys have had a great week. I hope that you've had a great day. Uh, the day is winding down, even for me. I'm sitting here, and I've just had a couple of discussions concerning uh, Takia Young uh, and her unborn child, a young black, I believe, 21-year-old uh, mother in Ohio who was shot and killed uh, by Ohio police officers uh, after an alleged uh, shop shoplifting incident. From what I understand, the police were outside in the parking lot, I believe of Walmart or something like that, shopping center. And um, some uh, employee runs out and screams, she, she shoplifted. And she had already gotten in her car. They approached the car, attempted to open the door. And she said she hadn't done anything and she didn't have to open her door. She was trying to leave. Uh, he stuck his hand in the window trying to open the door. She's trying to leave. Uh, this cop in front of the car. Again, I, I don't do snuff videos anymore, so I haven't seen any live footage. I just seen the write up on it and the steel shots. Um, I had to start protecting my spirit and my energy and my well being. I had seen so many uh, deaths uh, that I just stopped probably about six years ago. But um, I read up and I get feedback from people who have watched it so that I can get an idea so that I can speak on it from an informed position without having to really go through the devastation of watching it. But here's the thing. There's going to be some ongoing conversation about this because of the quote unquote shop at lifting component of this thing. Let me be clear here. Uh, and Ohio is getting quite the uh, reputation for shooting unarmed black people, uh, whether it's Tamir Rice, whether it's Jalen Goodwin, whether it's uh, what's the other guy? Jay, is it uh, Casey Goodwin, Jalen Walker, uh, some other guys over the last 10 years? There's been a few that, that we've seen killed unarmed by police officers who seem to be ready to shoot uh, at the slightest provocation or even when there isn't any justification whatsoever for shooting. Let me be clear here to those apologists who are going to say, well, if she would have been doing what she was supposed to do, first of all, we live in a world and in a country where you are innocent until proven guilty. Uh, I don't know what the outcome is going to be as for the whether she had shoplifted or not, but let's just say she did. First and foremost, you have to be assumed innocent until proven guilty. So if they didn't see her shoplifting, somebody just running out saying she shoplifted. We're talking about shoplifting. We're not talking about she robbed a store at gunpoint or knife point. We're not talk about, talking about she violently assaulted anyone. This isn't justifying uh, criminal behavior at all. You're not supposed to shoplift. If you shoplift, you should be arrested uh, for shoplifting. Arrested, not shot dead. Now, the thing is here, she was, if I'm not mistaken, seven months pregnant. She had a baby due in November sometime. So she was pregnant. The baby did not survive either. She was killed. And so the, the, the conversation now is going to be around the fact that the officers are going to say that uh, here's what I can tell you is already being said, said by uh, police apologists, because one officer had his arm in the window when she attempted to pull off. That's attempted assault on a police officer uh, because the other officer was standing in front of the car when she attempted to pull off. That's assault on a police officer. These are the police apologists. And let's be clear that the picture that I saw is before she starts to accelerate, he already has his weapon drawn. We're talking about you have a weapon drawn on a pregnant woman for shoplifting. Now, let me be very clear. First of all, police aren't judged during execution, regardless of what the crime is. But when we're talking about shoplifting. There's an understanding and that should be policies in most police departments of to what extent you go to uh, take someone into custody dependent upon the level of 
the crime and the potential for violence and harm if they should get away. That's a person that you sit up and you say, okay, it's not worth it. You take their darn gone uh, license plate number, go pick them up at home. It, it, it's, it's, it's not one of those things where if she gets away, she's about to go on a killing spree. There are so many different ways to handle that besides putting your, if you think she's going to drive off, putting, putting your life in jeopardy to pull a gun and stand in front of her car. What did she steal? Baby clothes, baby food, what? She, it, 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 and here's my thing. It's nothing in that store more valuable than a life. Again, if she showed some uh, inclination towards harming someone, going to, she's going on a killing spree, uh, whatever, we've seen it. And so my, 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 my thing is... I don't advocate criminal behavior. I think that that's something we got to go on, but we also have to understand the causality about it behind the vast majority of criminal behavior is poverty. Poverty is going to lead to criminal behavior. Engineered poverty is engineered with the purpose of creating criminal behavior. Again, this isn't justifying it. I'm telling you that there are three ways you feed your family through income created by a job or a business through supplemental uh, income by way of subsidies uh, from government programs or nonprofit organizations or criminal behavior. There's only three ways you do it. If you can't find a job, you can't get supplements, you will do what it takes to make sure your people have. And I'm not saying that that's the case. I'm sitting up saying we have to be realistic about behavior and, and get off this moral idea that everybody that uh, shoplifts is just this major criminal minded organized crime people that's running around uh you know ganking ganking people uh for gain and I, I don't know what her situation is i don't know what her case was or uh, why she did what she did if she did it but what i want to say with very clear intention is this is not a pass to shoot and kill a black woman. This is not justified, another uh, supposedly justified shooting of a black person. This is a lack of value of black life because we can get a white shooter. We can get a white shooter and they can shoot up the place, kill people. And we'll find out that they're taken into custody. We get an unarmed black person, they steal some cigarettes and they're dead. I don't know what she supposedly took, I'm just talking. But they steal some cigarettes and they're dead. We have a responsibility to hold these people accountable in whatever way is necessary. But what we cannot do is allow them to put a spin on it to where we abandon uh, our passion for fighting for our people again. If she did something wrong, she should have been held accountable for doing something wrong. The level of the thing that she had been accused of is in no way justified, it is capable of justifying her being killed, her baby being killed behind shoplifting. The, the fact that you can escalate a shoplifting situation to a killing of a citizen, this is shoplifting. And again, people don't sit up and say, well, you know, it's just, no, I'm not justifying uh, uh, poor behavior. What I'm sitting up and saying is there has to be a level of response. Your job isn't to go out and shoot up everybody and kill everybody that's not acting right. Your job is to serve and protect. Your job is to call as least amount of harm as you possibly can in the execution of your duties. Your job is to get people home safely. Your job is to make sure that people's property are protected. It, we don't even hang horse thieves anymore, but you shooting people for coming out of Walmart with, with goods. Th this is absolutely unacceptable. Again, we are to be assumed innocent until proven guilty. You don't get somebody hollering, she hollering or screaming, she shoplifted and shoot somebody. Again, if this person isn't an immediate threat to cause other people harm, let her go, get her driver's, I mean, her, her license plate number, run the plates, go find her. It's not that hard. 
it's not that hard. But what you just did is you just killed another young black person. You took a baby in the process. And then here come police unions. Here come all these other people. Well, if they only did this, if they only did that. No. If you can sit up and find a way to bring in a guy who's killed 10 people and was armed to the T, you can find a way to get a pregnant woman to, into custody without killing her. You can't, you can't give me anything else. Get your ass from in front of the damn car, let her go, go pick her up when she's at home. It's, 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 it's what people who are trained and professionals do. You're a professional. She's not the professional. She's not trained in de-escalation. You're supposed to be trained in de-escalation. You're supposed to be trained in rules of engagement. You're supposed to be trained in all of these things of whatnot. You're the one supposed to make sure people get home safe. She is heightened. She's emotional. She's trying to get away. She's whatever. And the last thing she's thinking, I'm pretty sure is, even if she took something, I know they're not finna shoot me over these cigarettes. And I keep using cigarettes because that's, that's what it is. I know they're not finna shoot me over no cigarettes. So that's the last thing in your mind. You know, I'm gonna just go and run away or whatever. And again, once you get in fight or flight mode, your decision-making capacity is next to zero because your prefrontal cortex shuts down and you, you, you your blood flow and your oxygen goes to your extremities. So you can do what? Fight or flight. Uh, a run. And so that's what she was doing. She was attempting to get away. So her decision making faculties, her impulse control, all the things that are part of the prefrontal cortex that would have said, hey, you probably want to chill out. These people have guns and they have a proclivity. That was gone. The moment it escalated, fight or flight hit, she was not going to make good decisions. This is why you have trained people that sit up and say, hello, we're escalating something that doesn't need to escalate. Let her go get a license plate number. Hey, partner, I already got a license plate number. Get the, get, get the fuck out of the way. Let her go. We'll go get her later. That's something, something you can have a warrant issue for. You, that, again, just common sense and the concern for human life was set that in that state. But anyway, I just had to stop and address this because I, I just got a couple of phone calls on it. I'm like, what did I miss? It happened on the 24th, but they just released the video footage. So everybody's really bugging right now. Uh, I want to send out uh, prayers and condolences to her name is Takiya, T-A capital K-I-Y-A. And to the little baby that never made it here. Uh, to her family, her loved ones. I think her mom uh, gave a press conference uh, to all of them. My prayers go out. But we have to be more willing to stand up for our people. We don't need to co-sign wrong to still upset. You know, my kids, I'm not going to co-sign that wrong, but I'm not going to let you kill them. That's not what's going to happen. And that's the same love we've got to have for our kids. Our, our, our people, our women, is... Our boys, our men, you, you, you know, yeah, if they did something wrong, arrest them. Now, if they trying to kill you, I, I can't fight that one. You know, it is what it is. I cannot fight that one. I'm not going to war with that one because credibility is so important when you're waging a war of information. It's so important that when you say something, people can take you serious. And if you're just sitting up saying, man, he was trying to shoot that copy shot five times and you're talking about Man, they should have let him make it. No, I'm not going to do that one. But, you know, somebody coming out unarmed and they shoplifted, let them roll. Get their information, have a warrant issue, go pick them up. It ain't that hard. But what we are seeing is when they don't value the life of the person in question, it's easy to pull that gun and pop it. And we need to hold them accountable we need to take away their freedom. We need to take away their livelihood. We need to go after their pensions. We need to go after their insurance. We need to make them pay each and every time to the fullest extent of the law, both in, on the criminal and the civil side. And they'll start valuing things because it's going to cost them something. So that's it on that for note. Look, if you... Uh, 
approve or you believe in what's being shared here, not just in this video, but any video, click the like button, uh, click the share button, subscribe. If you believe in the work that we do at the Odyssey Project or across the board, including situations like this, show some love, show some support and donate. The information is in the description box. One way or another, I'm out of here. I will holler at you guys tomorrow and we'll square this one away because I'm not done yet. But I just had to get this out. So on that note, y'all take it easy.